The weather outside might be a little bit on the chilly side, but we're gonna spice it up in the kitchen in this episode. We're gonna get started with some mango salsa, and this is gonna be a fantastic side for our main dish. But this salsa tastes best after it's sat in the refrigerator for a little while. So that's why we're starting with it today. So like I said, it's mango salsa, and we're gonna need two mangoes. So I'm gonna start by cutting my mangoes. If you've never cut a mango before, or even picked one out in the store, you wanna get a mango where there's a little bit of give to it so that you know that it's ripe. You also want a little piece of that stem attached, and you want it to wiggle just a tiny little bit. If you've never opened a mango before, there's a big pit, kind of like a giant seed in the middle. So you can see there's a wide side and a skinny side. We want to cut it skinny side down. The easiest way to do this is start by finding that little button and we're going to cut off just the bottom just like that. And you can see the start of that pit right there in the bottom of the mango. So I'm going to toss this out of the way because I don't need that for my recipe. But now I've got a nice flat cutting surface and it's going to make it a lot safer for cutting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut straight down the side just like that. And I'm going to come and cut just down the other side right over here. So now there's lots of different ways people cut their mangoes. And what I like to do with mine is check and make sure that I don't have any of that pit there. And I like to make little slits into the flesh of my mango. Now you can make big slits, you can make little slits. I, since this is going into a salsa, I'm going to make a lot of cuts going both directions. And the reason for that is then I don't have to do more and more cutting once I separate my flesh from the rind of the mango. So it seems like it's taking a little bit of extra time to do this, but it's gonna save me time in the long run. Now I'm gonna swipe the other direction and what that's gonna do is it's going to start making tiny little cubes of mango. So now that I've got all of those slices in there, I'm gonna gently push on the back of my fruit and then I'm able to flip it inside out and it kinda looks like a porcupine here. And then what I'm gonna do is just bring in my knife, just working along the edges and I'm gonna cut that flesh off of the skin and now you can see I've already got diced up tiny little pieces for my salsa. After you get this all sliced up, there's really not much left behind. So you can see I've got some really nice dices here and I just need to keep doing this for all of the sides of both of my mangoes. So I'll have three more sections just like this to cut apart. So we said that we were gonna spice some things up with these recipes and to do that, we're gonna add two types of peppers. The first thing we're gonna add is a red pepper and we only need half. So I'm gonna cut my red pepper in half then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove those seeds and get rid of that vein in the middle because that's not the most pleasant thing to bite into when you're having salsa. And then I wanna cut these into nice little pieces about the size of the mango slices that I put in there so we get some sort of consistency in the salsa when we take a scoop or a bite. So we've not really talked about what you can do with this salsa and there's lots of possibilities here. You can have this on chips like we're going to do today with our main dish. This also works really well. You can also put it on meat. It's fantastic if you have some fish. You can even squeeze some extra citrus on there if you want to, but it's really not needed at all once you've got this good salsa on the top of it. So now we have all of our red pepper chopped and diced, I guess is the technical term for it. We'll set this to the side, we'll save that for another recipe. And I said we have two types of peppers in this recipe. Our next type of pepper is a jalapeno pepper and a lot of times people are frightened by this because they are fearful of how much spice it's going to add to their recipe. So this is what I do to combat that. I start by slicing off the top and then I take it down the middle. The first thing I do, and with this, I'm gonna take my knife and slice out those ribs, and I'm gonna pull out the seeds. I'm laughing to myself here because one time when I did this, I sliced up the jalapeno and not thinking, uh, ended up itching my eye, and that was very painful, so don't do what I did at one point. So we're gonna clean out those ribs, 
on both sides of the jalapeno. The other thing too is if you're a person that doesn't work with spicy peppers very much, make sure that you clean off your knife in between the things that you're cutting, um, especially if you're working on multiple recipes, if you're trying to multitask, because you don't want some of those jalapeno oils in there sneaking into another recipe and then you getting kind of a little spook when you bite into it with how spicy that food actually becomes. So I have my cutting board all cleaned off and now what I'm gonna do is just like I did with the pep red peppers, I'm gonna come in and if you notice, I made little match sticks there and I'm just gonna do that on both sides. Because I've got this cleaned up and because I've got a lot of the rib removed, you can see here that there are different colors. The whiter it is, the spicier it is. So if you're worried about that, you can just come in with your knife and clean off some of that white and we just got rid of a lot of that heat. So if you have a, more of a sensitive palette, that'll help you out. So we're just gonna keep matchstick cutting. And now the very last thing I'm gonna do is just gonna dice this up a little bit so I have tiny little squares of jalapenos. So now I've got that all chopped up. You can see compared to the other ingredients, it's not nearly as much. So we're gonna add that in right there. And now I'm actually using up some ingredients from a recipe from the other night. I have two tablespoons of red onion. Now what I'm gonna add is one tablespoon of lemon juice. And then I have one lime here. You can buy bottled lime juice at some grocery stores around town, but I like it better if it's fresh. So in order to get that ready so that it's ready to release all of those lime juices, I'm just gonna take and push my hand down gently and roll it back and forth. It's gonna break some of those sections inside of the lime. Then I'm just going to slice it in half and then just do a nice squeeze. And that's gonna bring out some of that lime juice. This also is gonna be really nice because it's gonna keep your colors really nice and vibrant. Adding the lemon juice and adding the lime juice, the different acids in there will set that color. So you won't have to worry about this turning brown. It's best to make the salsa the day that you're going to eat it because that's when those flavors are the nicest. But remember, like I said at the beginning, once we get this all combined, we wanna put it into the refrigerator for an hour because that's gonna put all of the juices of all the different fruits and vegetables together to give us that best flavor. And then the last thing I wanna do is just season it with some salt and pepper before it goes into the refrigerator. I don't wanna go crazy with my salt and my pepper right now, just a couple twists of each because I'm gonna taste it one more time when it comes out of the refrigerator when I'm ready to eat. So we just spin and it's ready to go into the refrigerator. All right, it's time for the star of our show. We're working on our main dish, and the main dish this time is a citrus pork roast. So in order to get this going, we're gonna make a citrus marinade, but it's got some other flavors too in there to give us that kick. We're gonna start by getting a bowl ready to put all of our marinade ingredients in. The first thing we're gonna do is add three quarters of a cup of olive oil. Then the next thing that we're going to add is one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of oregano, and one tablespoon of brown sugar. Oops, and it's humid in my kitchen, I guess. It's stuck together. So now what I'm gonna do is take a fork and I'm gonna start mixing all of this together. You can use a spoon, you can use a scraper, you could use a whisk but some of the ingredients are gonna get larger and I just like to use a fork myself. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my bowl front and center and I'm gonna grab an orange and this is our first level of citrus here. I have a zester right here and I am going to zest my orange. When I'm zesting my orange, if this is a new adventure for you or if it's been a while, what I wanna do is hold it over my bowl just so if any pieces fall in, they're ready to go right away. When I'm going across the top of the orange, I wanna take literally just the orange. 
it's better safe than sorry. As soon as you hit into that white, if you go too deep, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a bitterness into your marinade. And this meat is going to sit in this marinade for a minimum of four hours. So you could do this before you go to work in the morning or actually it can go almost a full 24 hours. I'll put this into the refrigerator the night before. And then what I'll do is just have it ready for dinner then that following day. So I've got all of my orange zested and I'm just gonna take and push that right into my marinade, clean out both sides of my zester. So I've got another layer of flavor there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna waste this. I'm gonna roll it back and forth so I can break up some of that membrane inside of the orange. And then what I'm gonna do is slice it open and inside of my orange, I have about a quarter of a cup of juice. If you're really particular, you can measure it out if you're worried about this, but I wanna get fresh orange juice into there. I'm a fan of not wasting anything extra. So all in all, I'm gonna need three quarters of a cup of orange juice. But after I get this first quarter of a cup of orange juice that's fresh squeezed in there, I'm gonna balance it out by adding a half a cup of orange juice just from my carton in my refrigerator. So you can see I've got my hand underneath my orange. Remember there's seeds inside of your orange. You don't wanna get those seeds into that marinade. So. Like I said, I've got another half a cup of orange juice just from my refrigerator. I'm gonna give this another little spinner in. Now you're gonna see that the liquids are starting to separate because you have the orange juice and you have the oil in there. But the more you stir, the more it will combine. So the next thing I'm gonna add is the juice of a lime. So I'm gonna do my same roll. And so now I've got two types of citrus inside of my marinade. So my lime is now added in there, and I said we were gonna have some bigger ingredients in there that maybe would determine what you'd wanna stir with. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some cilantro, and I wanna chop this down nice and small because I wanna get about a half a cup of cilantro that I can add into that marinade. I'm gonna roll it up, kinda twist it around itself. It'll make it easier to start slicing and dicing. So I'm just gonna go once more the opposite direction. And actually I was a little generous. I don't even need all this cilantro. I just need about a handful. Like I said, you can always be pickier and more exact with your measurements. So now our next ingredient that we're gonna add is mint. And what I'm gonna do is I just have a stock of mint that I got at the grocery store. You wanna use fresh mint for this, not dried mint. And so I'm just gonna start pulling some different leaves off of my mint. And once I get this all cut and chopped and delightfully ready, I wanna have about a quarter of a cup there. I'm pulling these off the stalks because you're not gonna get a very nice flavor if you put the mint stalks in. You definitely just want the mint leaves. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing where I just kinda take my pile and twisty twist. All right, so now we've got a quarter of a cup of mint. And now I'm just gonna stir to get those greens intermixed. So now, since my cutting board's already dirty, I'm gonna transfer my pork roast. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up that package and when it comes to picking out your pork roast, this marinade works for three and a quarter pounds of pork roast. You could go up to four pounds with your roast, but you're not going to have as intense a flavor. So you'll get a subtleness to it, but you're not gonna get that strong citrus level. So when you buy your pork roast, it may come like mine, where you've got this little net around it. So I wanna cut that off. We'll tie this up instead when it goes into the oven to keep it shaped. So what I like to do is take a look and see what my fat cap on my pork looks like. So you can see it's really nice and thin. You can see the pink coming through here. I'm lucky. I don't have to do any trimming on this right now. If there were any really thick pieces on that pork, all you'd have to do is, I've got a tiny bit there that's a little on the thick side. Just take my knife and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and just cut away those pieces of fat. You can see here that they're not losing out on any meat. I'm just getting rid of extra fat that really I don't need. The more fat you have on that roast, uh, it's gonna take longer to render or cook down in the oven and really 
if that's not all the way cooked, you're left with kind of a chewy ickiness. So I'm gonna take that piece off. So really I've got it nice and trimmed now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna pop this right into here. And now I'm gonna take my fork out of my bag. And I'm gonna put all my beautiful marinade in there. Now, I'm gonna try and get out as much air as possible, so I'm gonna close that bag part of the way. Smush, 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 smush. Slide. And now, when I lift it up, it's pancaked flat. So I am going to wash my hands and then I'm gonna transfer this into a different baking dish. At this point, I didn't take a break to wash my hands. I don't want my refrigerator to get all gross and gooey from anything that might be on the outside of this bag. So I'm gonna put it into that baking dish so it can stay properly refrigerated without making a mess or contaminating anything else in my refrigerator. So let's see what happens when this sits overnight. So now I have my roast out of my refrigerator. It's been marinating, and this one's been in there since last night. And you can see we've got a lot more of our marinades absorbed into our cut of meat. So we're gonna open up our bag, but before we do that, we're gonna wrap this roast before we put it in the oven. So I have three pieces of kitchen twine. And what I'm gonna do before I lay my roast down is I'm going to set out my twine just across my cutting board, keeping my workspace a little bit cleaner. Now I'm gonna pop open my bag and I'm gonna transfer it over right here. And I'm gonna go in for a grab of my roast and I'm gonna lay that down on my board. Now, this is gonna go into the oven, so I still have some of those mint and cilantro leaves. I'm gonna put those back into my bag because we're gonna use that actually for a sauce that we're gonna use later. So I'm gonna take off some of these leaves just so I don't run the risk of burning anything when it's in my oven. And now I'm going to tuck and tie. So what I mean by that is just put this together nicely. So you can just tie it up just like basic shoelace knots. I'm gonna double knot. I don't want my knots to come out. And I'm just gonna let this extra lie for right now. I'm gonna slide this up. I'm gonna tuck it a little bit and I'm gonna tie it nice and tight and do another double knot. This is gonna help me get a more uniform shape when I'm in my oven, and it'll cook more evenly then with that uniform shape. And now I'm gonna come in with just a pair of kitchen scissors. I've got a little pair, you might have a big pair. I'm just gonna cut this extra string off, just like so, and just like so. Now, if you notice, I have it with my fat on the side up. And so what that's gonna do is when this is roasting in the oven, that fat's gonna cook down and it's gonna be kind of like a second glaze on top of that marinade. And you can see I've got really nice flavors. I've got a couple leaves there of my mint and my cilantro. I've got some of that orange zest in there, but that's gonna give it that extra flavor. Just not so much that you'd have to run the risk of burning. I'm gonna transfer it over to a baking sheet and I have it supported with a wire rack. When I set it on top of that wire rack, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give it a little bit of air space to go underneath when it's cooking in the oven. I already have my oven preheated for 425 degrees, and the oven's gonna cook for 30 minutes at that temperature. After 30 minutes, drop it down to 375 and cook it for another 30, and then we're good to serve. So let's get that going. While our roast is cooking in the oven, we're gonna make a second side, and that second side is green rice. Remember, we need a kick to everything we're eating today, so we're gonna kick it up by turning our rice green with some pretty fancy and exciting stuff. So I'm gonna start by adding four cups of water to a large pot. So to those four cups of water, I'm gonna add two cups of rice, just like so, and all I'm gonna do is try and get my rice a little damp, and then I'm gonna bring this to a boil. I'm gonna cover this up to help it boil just a little bit. While that's bringing itself to a boil, I'm gonna get our green ready, and you can see I've got a lot of green going on on my cutting board. I have one avocado, 
three limes, a jalapeno, and some cilantro. See, I told you I like it. I have a small container that came with my stick or immersion blender. If you have a countertop blender, you can definitely use it. I just pretty much do everything with my stick blender. So I have in this cup, two tablespoons of olive oil. To that, I'm going to start my greens going. So I wanna get some cilantro. And I want to have about a half a cup of cilantro. And I'm gonna spin that up on itself. And I'm gonna start by just cutting it up a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna blend this. So I wanna have about that half a cup. So I'm gonna put that into my bowl. Then what I wanna do is I wanna get half of an avocado in there. So I'm gonna cut this in half. And if you've not cut an avocado before, you have a pit in the middle of your avocado. So I'm gonna work my way around the edges. So I'm gonna twist these to take those apart. And then what I'm gonna do is, for simplicity's sake, I'll work with the other half. I'm gonna come just like I did with my mango earlier in my salsa and make some slices and some slices. And I'm gonna do that little porcupine trick just like I did before. And this time, it looks like my skin's a little bit tougher on this one. Sometimes that'll happen, it's no big deal. And I'm gonna take and add those pieces into my mixer. You can also do this with a spoon if you want to. I just don't like dirtying extra utensils. So our next level of green is that jalapeno. And we're gonna chop that up just like we did with our salsa. We're gonna cut off that top. This bottom was a little extra pointy. So I'm gonna take and remove those seeds. Now I've got my jalapenos nice and cleaned up. What I'm gonna do, and this seems a little silly cause I'm gonna blend it, but it's gonna make a big difference. Because the skin is a little bit tougher on the side of a jalapeno, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grate this over the top of my bowl, right into my green mix. By doing this, it's gonna break down that outside membrane and I'm not gonna run the risk of having some tougher parts inside of my mix when it comes to adding it to my rice. So I'm in the middle of grating down my jalapenos and I can see that my rice is boiling now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch that over to a low simmer and I'm gonna let that go for about 15 minutes. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add more liquid in order to make this be the best that it can possibly be. So I'm gonna do that by adding the juice of three limes. It's gonna give me that lime rice flavor and also it's another layer of green that we can add. All right, we have all of our different greens inside of there. So now what I wanna do is give us a quick little bit of salt and a quick little bit of pepper. And now I'm gonna take my blender and I'm gonna mix it all together. So I've got this all mixed together and I cleaned up my space and I'm gonna pop my blender apart. And we can see we've got a really nice green color. And now my next step is to get this all set up and ready. So I have my green sauce. I also have a half of a cup of manchego cheese. Now, when you buy that, it usually comes in a wedge or in a block. So what I've done is I've really finely shredded it. Because it's going into rice, it's gonna melt into that rice, but I wanna make sure that it's fine because I don't want it to bring the temperature of my rice down. So while our rice was finishing up, the roast came out of the oven. So now that needs to sit for 30 minutes so that all of the juices can be reabsorbed back to the pork. And that's great because it gives us time to finish up our rice and it also gives us time to go back to that sauce. So I'm gonna take my rice off of the heat. You can see it's totally different now. It's all nice and fluffy. And what I ended up doing was I took a little taste of it to make sure that my rice was all super, super nice. So I'm gonna come in with my spatula and give it a little stir to fluff it up a little bit. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my cheese into my rice. And then I'm going to stir that around to get that cheese starting to melt in and get gooey on that rice. And then, oh, it already starts to smell totally different. This cheese has a nice little salt kick to it. And so that's perfect. So this is the part that's a little silly, 
but I don't want to cook my avocado. And you can see there's still steam popping up in front of me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this rice sit for about five minutes and then I'm going to add in my green mixture so that I don't run the risk of ruining any of those really nice fresh flavors. So we'll let this sit for five and then top it off with my greens. So I took a moment, I slid over my rice and we're gonna work on getting that sauce ready because remember, we want all this to be ready when that pork is ready. So in this bowl, this is everything that was in that marinade bag and I'm gonna transfer that over to a saucepan and I'm gonna put that on medium heat and what I want to do is I want to cook this so it comes to a boil and I can really cook down those flavors. I'm going to strain out some of those leaves of cilantro and mint before we take it to the table, but I want to render it down so it's really nice and concentrated. So now that that sauce is taking care of what it needs to, we are going to take our rice and turn it green because right now we definitely do not have green rice. So what I'm gonna do now is take my green and I'm gonna scoop it out of my container. And now I'm just gonna fold in my green sauce into my rice. All right, so I have all of my green mixed into my rice and you can definitely tell there's a change now. So what I wanna do is I wanna give this a little taste and that'll let me know do I need any more salt? Do I need any more pepper in there? That's pretty fantastic. So I think it's time to plate everything up and see how everything looks. It smells fantastic in here. You wouldn't know that we're running the risk of sub-zero temperatures outside. Mango salsa, green rice, and citrus pork roast. This is going to be delicious. So remember, the apron's optional, but the flavor isn't. like a man screaming in pain. Ah! <laughs>